Um, thank you. I appreciate being invited. I uh, have a reasonably long history, I think, with the Architecture League. Um, over, over the years, they've been incredibly supportive of, uh, of my work and my career. Um, uh, it's nice, it's nice that um, that relationship has continued. Um, and the venues keep getting slightly bigger each time. Um, uh, it's a, incredible to be here uh, in this space as well tonight. Um, uh, the title of the lecture, No More Play, uh, is um, the title of uh, a book which I recently uh, did. Um, it's, it's not so much a postulation as a question mark um, about the urbanism of Los Angeles and uh, uh, what, um, what is beginning to develop and happen in Los Angeles, a city that has continued to evolve and continued to change uh, uh, and in many ways, for better or worse, has been a template for many uh, emerging cities globally as well. Um, that means that the things that happen there, uh, the developments urbanistically, very often are things that you see in, in other cities. And, and, and because of that, um, I uh, continue to be fascinated in that city as a laboratory uh, for architecture, for landscape, and for urbanism, and especially for issues around uh, the social and public realm and architecture's involvement in that. Uh, one of the very first projects uh, that we were involved in as a project in downtown Los Angeles, in the sk Skid Row uh, part of, of Los Angeles, which is immediately adjacent to the more iconic skyline of, of downtown. Um, uh, for a school, Inner City Arts, it's a nonprofit uh, <clears throat> private institution that was started uh, in response to uh, uh, Proposition 13, which was a tax reform bill uh, many years ago, and had the effect of taking many of what were considered extracurricular activities like art um, out of the public schools. Inner City Arts started as a public-private collaboration where the school kids uh, from the Unified School District come to uh, ICA and uh, take art classes along with their teachers so that it becomes not so much an after school or latchkey program, but it is very much a part of their integrated uh, e education over the course of the day. Uh, it is a project that has continued to evolve and continued to grow. Uh, we, are, we recently finished the third phase of the project. It's been going for uh, over 15 years. And at each incremental stage, the, the project uh, continued to move from, uh, from its uh, primary function as a school to one which is uh, becoming more and more the center of a community that actually does exist uh, in, Skid, in Skid Row. Um, it's an incredibly unlikely context for architecture. Um, and because of that, I was interested in exploring and have continued to be interested in exploring how elastic architecture can be, how many different types of contexts, different types of programs, and different types of scale architecture can cover, uh, and, and, and how many different contexts it can exist in, um, to see if architecture's role can continue to be expanded in the way that it deals with a lot of these um, more, more uh, difficult uh, urban and uh, civic issues, to have an expanded role in cities. I've also been interested in looking at how um, architecture uh, as building can uh, change its relationship uh, to be architecture as urban design, um, to collapse those two disciplines, to see if the form of building can also at the same time have many of the same mechanisms as urbanism uh, and participate in the city not only as um, singular building but, but uh, as fabric as well. Um, this photograph, I think, says a lot about inner city arts. It says a lot about uh, the city, which many people believe in Los Angeles, that Los Angeles is a, a, an undense city um, because of its horizontality. And, and it is true that it doesn't have the same kind of mass den density as a city 
uh, like New York, but it does have an absolutely continuous carpet of occupation. And, the, and, and public spaces and, and, and semi-public spaces in, in many ways don't exist. You have uh, the infrastructural spaces of the streets uh, or the highway, and then this incredible consistent uh, density, especially in the cities. I talked about the unlikeliness of, of that context. Uh, th this project, Inner City Arts, um, uh, uh, has uh, pieces of it that were built from existing buildings as well as many new buildings. Um, at times it has uh, an incredible um, toughness to the street given, uh, given the context. At other times it starts to break open. Um, it starts to crack open to this internal oasis of a courtyard on the inside, around which all of the different um, pieces of, of the projects, all of the dis different disciplinary uh, programs are distributed very much as if it was uh, a small village or a town, a kind of microcosm of, of the way that you might make um, uh, a more, I don't know if it's utopian, uh, town, but at least a, a more progressive idea of the way um, these different disciplines can re relate to each other. And here you see that while there is a very strong wall around the perimeter of, of the site for very necessary reasons, um, that, those, that wall begins to crack open and that there are larger uh, potential openings into the inside of that space. At the corner is a 99-seat black box theater, which has started to become a home for many of the cultural institutions in the city, like the Los Angeles Philharmonic is now running programs there, the LA Theater Center, many of the museums are starting to use this as a destination, uh, because while it's um, located in Skid Row, it's halfway between downtown and East Los Angeles, which is the growing um, Latino majority in the city. On the inside of uh, the project, uh, and this was uh, taken a little bit earlier, so uh, the landscape has started to uh, almost take over, um, given the uh, almost tropical uh, character of, of uh, our, our weather, uh, has really started to take over on the interior of this space. This was uh, phase, phase one with uh, ceramics tower, a new ceramics tower, which becomes uh, a beacon or a lantern um, uh, a signpost from outside the campus uh, that there is very much a life on the inside of, of this space, the surrounding of other programmatic spaces and the city beyond. Um, in, in many cases, the classrooms are quite perfunctory um, art studios uh, uh, whose primary attribute is space and light, but very different than many of the public school uh, classrooms that exist. And then the 99-seat theater, uh, which has the ability to be used as a black box theater and change quite, uh, quite regularly. The community, um, uh, even on Skid Row, is starting to use this space um, as well. Um, we recently completed the second of these projects, Carver Apartments, 98 units, um, where Skid, the, the housing trust was uh, looking to experiment by moving one of these buildings outside of the normal Skid Row area to try to see if the balkanization, which um, could potentially happen by having all of those, uh, those buildings in one place, could be mitigated by quite literally spreading them out. And um, it's a very complex site. Uh, very small to get 98 units. It's a strange shape, kind of semi quarter of a pie shaped site. Um, it seemed almost impossible to get that many units on it. And it also has the um, added uh, uh, concern, which I felt was an attribute, of the 10 freeway within about uh, 10 feet or 20 feet of, of the site. Uh, immediately uh, adjacent to this site is the Staples Center, the Convention Center, LA Live, where the um, Lakers play, the Kings play. So it's in quite close proximity to things that are very visible and iconic in, uh, in the city. Um, but I thought that that visibility was one of the strongest uh, potential attributes. Um, to be able to say that, uh, uh, that this type of housing wasn't, um, it wasn't, uh, it shouldn't try to hide in the city. It, it shouldn't try to um, uh, diminish its, its visibility or, or uh, its position in the city. In fact, I think uh, these projects and thinking about them as more, having a stronger, more, iconic status, which is something that we've at times been criticized about, is, is deeply important not only to making the city as a whole aware 
of the breadth of different communities that exist in the city, but also for the community that lives inside the building um, uh, to, uh, to understand that um, there's a sense of great pride um, and attention that's been placed on, on these buildings. Second thing that was so interesting uh, was not only the highway up above, which some people have argued is the, um, the public space in Los Angeles, um, but, the, um, but an interest of mine um, uh, in thinking about Los Angeles, and I talked about this quite a bit in, in, in No More Play, the idea that uh, highways, many of the infrastructures in our cities act as monocultures. They really only do one thing. Um, in the case of the highway, it's about mobility, which is increasingly becoming constricted. Um, but these are enormous structures in the city and very often throwing off um, uh, interesting and, and potential spaces, um, spaces of, of, of possible connection and, um, and uh, uh, larger activity uh, if you began to reimagine those spaces not, or those infrastructures not so much as monocultures but as multicultures um, to break down the different siloization of, of, of the constituent parts of the city. And one of the fantastic things about having the Star Apartments here was that while we couldn't literally um, glom on to the highway, although uh, I, I uh, talked about it some, that we could begin to make parts of the building very visible or very, uh, to try to connect it to um, uh, the underneath of that space. This is uh, obviously a view as you're spinning by. The circular form of the, I won't do it too many times, sorry. Um, the, the, uh, the circular form of the building uh, uh, start, uh, like the Pittman House, seems like it's almost uh, spinning uh, along with you. It has uh, important uh, practical uh, uh, component as well, which is that um, uh, if, if the, there is a courtyard in the center and the building is actually um, a slightly unfolding circle, uh, the circular form puts uh, the mass of the building or the smallest amount of mass of the building in, in proximity to the highway. And acoustically, that's very important. Every foot you are able to get away from the sound source, um, it means that there's less mitigation you have to do. And that mitigation was going to be very expensive given the sound levels uh, on the site. The second thing we had learned from the Star Apartments was that while breaking this building open into a courtyard shape, um, provided an important social function, it actually increased at a very pragmatic level the surface area of the building, which was the most expensive part of the building. What we discovered was that a circular form is interesting because it gives you the maximum amount of, of, of square footage, floor area, with the minimal, uh, minim, the most minimal amount of, of surface area as a geometric uh, 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 puzzle. And, and so that was something also to experiment with. But that idea that that circular form was also in uh, a choreographed dance, a kind of motion with you as you zoomed by on the highway or, or more frequently um, stopping and looking at the building, um, stuck in traffic. But that, that form uh, was an important way for the, f the architecture to have a, c a conversation uh, with uh, the people on the highway as well. The uh, building is broken up into two very different types of floor plates. On the ground floor, there are a series of concrete walls which uh, very much recall the underneath and the construction of the highway, but also point to views through the highway to the alleys out to um, uh, this street this is uh, actually called Hope Street in the city, um, and that those intersections in the plan start to recreate many of, of the types of intersections that you might see as well urbanistically in this part of the city. As you move up through, as soon as you get up uh, past that deck, the building takes its circular form uh, with each of the individual apartments exactly the same, that's part of, of the brief, but they start to slide out uh, in a more ratcheted form, which gives small um, uh, but, but very important uh, spaces at the entries of, of the apartments, as well as beginning to uh, create that facade on the exterior uh, so that it almost feels like a series of stacks of more individual apartments as opposed to one continuous and unbroken circular form. The courtyard in the middle is much smaller than the one in uh, the Rainbow Apartments. Um, and while it is 
the, the hub or the center of the social life in the building, including the stairs that connect the lobby up to um, this first floor of the apartments, uh, where those steps become like an amphitheater for the community. They have a lot of events, they have music events, they have um, talks uh, within the community and uh, bring people from outside the community in. Here you also see these tall, long fins and one of the things that we learned in that first project was that every piece, as I had mentioned, every piece of the architecture had somehow to, had to be somehow fundamental to the building. It couldn't be something that was seen as only doing one uh, task in the building. Here, we uh, uh, were supporting structuring uh, laterally the entire building through a series of, of uh, uh, steel frames on the inside, steel tubes on the inside of the courtyard, which created a very rigid in, uh, interior structural ring. We were bringing all of the rainwater down, all the rainwater leaders, so they weren't in the apartments uh, from the exterior, as well as having to met, uh, uh, vent some uh, methane gases in the ground underneath. And then we cladded that, uh, e each of those, those different um, structural or, or uh, programmatic elements uh, to create this interior, uh, 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 the interior form of the fins. But they're important as well, they do something else, which is to allow you to see all the way across the courtyard, but begin um, uh, transversely or peripherally to start to mediate and block, uh, almost like blinders, uh, the apartments next to you so that uh, the people in closest proximity have some amount of, of privacy, even though it's a quite tight space. Most of the social uh, functions in, the, in Rainbow were all on one floor. Here, they start to spiral up with the form of the building, including outdoor meeting room and smoking porch, uh, kitchen lobbies, and importantly, the laundry room and uh, TV and meeting room, which is placed, um, uh, here we go, is placed on the third floor of the building, which is exactly the same floor as the highway, the raised highway. So that that space becomes the front porch for the building um, to the street, uh, to the community as it drives by. In a very similar type of relationship, albeit in a more extreme way, to the kind of, of relationship you might have um, on a porch to the outside. But it's not just the, build, the people in the building seeing out, it is also very much the people uh, on the highway in the city seeing into the building. And then finally, the view up through um, where the dome of the sky, which constantly changes, uh, is, is uh, one of the things which creates the, I think, the real spirit of the building on the inside. 